Paul, many people asking me to ask you how you reflect on your career. And of course, one of the, one of the most significant times, you touched on it, was when you left West Ham United. And you put the record straight about what happened when you went, went from West Ham United uh, to Manchester United, if indeed the record needed to be put straight. But you're just being honest, as you always are. So I look at your time and I look at your medal hall, your honours hall at Manchester United. Um, 28 goals in 228 uh, appearances. A um, couple of Premier League titles, a couple of FA Cups, uh, a League Cup, three charity shields, European Cup Winners' Cup, I remember that. European Super Cup as well. I mean, when you got together and your working relationship <clears throat> with Sir Alex, what was it like and where did it get to? I mean, when was the best time for you working under Sir Alex? Um, listen, I think, you know, all the time working under Sir Alex is a good time because you're always learning something. You're always learning something. Listen, like, it, you know, if you look at every player in our squad, they would tell you they'd better fall out with Sir Alex Ferguson. It, it, it was just a natural thing. They'd had a fallout with him. Of course they did. Yeah, it was, it was, everybody it, did. Everyone did. It was not no, It wasn't like it's kind of different nowadays because I think players are a lot more fragile than what they were in our time, um, and we were strong personalities. But you always fell out of so Alex Ferguson because we had egos. We had egos, and when you got egos, they clash. Whether it's a player on player, whether it's player on manager, and if the gaffer says something, so Alex Ferguson's last words were the worst last words you'll hear, and what he says at the end of right. But it didn't mean you agreed with him. So we we're opinionated. So when you're opinionated, you're going to have clashes with managers mm. or coaches. It was natural as that, but it was done and dusted. We had a, we had a game at Norwich, which was a big, big game, 92, 93 it was. And Norwich at the time were going for the title. Very, very good team they had at the time. Um, and I think we won the game 3-1, 3-0, something like that. So, so there was about five minutes to go and I've got the ball and I've gone on a little mazy. And I've lost the ball. They've gone up the pitch, nearly scored. Didn't think nothing of it. Just thought, ah. So we get into the change room. All the lads are like patting each other on the back and saying, well done and that. You know, I'm joining in the fun. And then so Alex comes storming through the door like Rambo. Um, you know, absolutely slaughtering me. Shadow, did you know, you're doing this. You're not Maradona. I'll give the ball past the, past the best players and all that stuff. And I'm thinking, you know, where's this come from? You know, and... Um, me being me, you know. The, you bit uh, back. I bit back. It's you know. I wasn't gonna, you know. It wasn't a case of let them get away with it, but we just beat one of the total contenders comfortably at Carrow Road, and I've had a decent game, and we won three 0 three one. And it's, it was all about standards for him, and doing the right things all the time, and not coming away from it. And that shows with the greatness of the man. But me, I being me as a as a character I was at the time, bit back, started having a shouting match. Um, you had to be restrained by four teammates, did you? <laughs> oh, you must have been strong. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I, I, thought it was, I thought it was eight, but obviously I'll take four. <laughs> I'll take, I'll serious, take, I'll take you, four. Were you seriously having a go? Yeah, I was having a go, yeah. It, it was like one of, you know, a few times that I, I actually... Because I don't think it's right. I, I, I Personally, now looking back on it, I don't think it's right that a player should be actually confronting a manager, any manager, I don't care where... But, but of what elk? I just I think it's not the right thing. But when emotions run high and you're you get accused of just one minor detail and we've won the game, I had to go back and you know people came in Sharpie or that up Brian Kidd and and um, that was it. Got, got back on a coach. He didn't speak to me. I didn't speak to him. Um, I think it was a Tuesday night we played uh, Norwich. So on the Thursday we come back in. So the lads who played on the Tuesday we played head tennis. And as Robbo, Robbo said to her, I like to win. So um, we've got five of either side. So Fergie's a referee. I've not even spoke to Fergie for 48 hours now. Not said good morning to him or nothing. Um, so, <laughs> He's so stubborn. Uh, <laughs> so the game's going, goes, going. First to 11. Gets to 10 10. Ball goes up in the air. Talking about overhead kicks. <laughs> I did overhead kick. Right in the corner of the, of, of the court. Win the game 11 10. We're jumping about. Next week, so it goes. So Alex Ferguson goes, ball was out. And I'm like, the ball, ball wasn't out, Jim. It was in. But because I wasn't speaking to him, I couldn't say anything. And I was just bubbling underneath. Because we hadn't spoken for 48 hours, I couldn't <laughs> contest the decision. So he goes, winners, them. So I'm walking away. And then all of a sudden he goes, in see. And I turned around and he went, only one governor here, son. <laughs> <laughs> and we started to laugh and then yeah. after that we were speaking again and that was it and that was it that's the greatness of the man 
I mean, that was phenomenal because it was feisty in that Norwich dressing room, was it mm. not? I mean, he was saying, you got to look up when you're on a run. That's what mm. he was annoyed about. You apparently said, well, if I'm that bad, why don't you sell me? You, and then a shocking word, Mr. Inns. But... And he said, no, you, you, I don't, don't, I don't, I don't, "You don't have the bottle to sell me." You said to Sir Alex, and no doubt <laughs> you'd say that. <laughs> no doubt that's what caused the, uh, you know, the, the the feistiness between the two of you, the friction. No, no, listen, no, no, I think Sir Alex Ferguson really could have dealt with it in a, in a way. We've just won the game. There was no need to come in and up, upset the atmosphere that was being generated in the changing yeah. room. Where did the word governor come <clears> from? Did you christen yourself governor? No, I think this is, but people don't understand, and I hate when people say self proclaimed governor. Governor was a thing back in my day when I was at Dagenham growing up, and it was um, all my boys, we used to go to a snooker hall called Nelson's in Green Lane, Dagenham. And every time we played snooker or won a card game, we'd go, oh, a good shot. You'd say, oh, who's the governor? Who's the governor? It was just a thing we would brought up on in, in, in Dagenham. When I go to Manchester United, we're doing a shooting session, Peter Schmeichel's in goal one of the best goalkeepers of all time. Um, and he loves to, like, go into the goals and say, no one's going to get past me, no one's going to score. And at times, you couldn't beat him. He was unbeatable, Schmeichs. Um, and then one time I got a boy on my left foot, believe it or not, Carl, and I smashed one in the, <laughs> smashed one in the top-hand corner, and I went running around the pitch going, who's the governor, who's the governor? That's what I normally say. Yeah. And then every time I scored, I kept saying it. And then Brian Kidd called me Gov once, and all of a sudden... It sticks. It sticks. And it, that's yeah. quite nice, isn't it? You know, I mean, it's nothing into it. It's nothing like. It's quite nice. Quite nice. It's <laughs> nothing more than a nickname, is there? You know, and I think people kind of use that to think, well, he called himself the governor, which is a load of crap because yeah. that wasn't, wasn't the case. That's when, where it come from. When the end came at Manchester United, mm -hmm. how did it come? Well, I was one up against Giggsy on the golf course. That's for sure at Worsley Park. You know where Worsley Park come? Yeah. Uh, I was one up, but three to play. I was in the buggy and um, got a phone call. Um, said it's um, Sir Alex uh, I want to see you so I said okay I'll come and see you tomorrow at the training ground went, no no and I'm at the, at the golf club so I'm thinking again I've done something wrong absolutely pooing me pants you know what I mean to think what have I done wrong he was a scary man <laughs> you know he was a scary man but when I got into the car into his car he looked quite relaxed and quite happy so I thought there's not an issue um, so ultimately he just said listen Paul we've accepted a bid from Inti Milan we want to build a new training ground, that's in Carrington. You know, we've got Nicky Buck coming through um, as, as a young, very good midfield player. And it's filled with an offer we can't accept. Can't reject, sorry. So I was shocked, you know what I mean? Because prior to that, we was, I was discussing with Martin Edwards about a four-year deal. I've already been there six years. Normally you get your four years, you get your testimonial, which we don't do nowadays, but, you know, that's what happened in our time. You get your testimonial. Uh, so to hear that was kind of like, Shell shocked, you know what I mean. Did I was, you know anything about Inter Milan's interest? Well, I, I, I heard after that that was at the Crystal Palace game, the infamous Eric Cantona thing, um, yeah. watching me play, um, and Cantona. But I, I kind of set myself on being at Mate United for the rest of my life. You know, I was getting to, get to what, twenty six, twenty seven. You know what I mean? Thomas was only two. He was at nursery, so there was a lot of, you know, I never really went to school. So to go to Italy and try and learn another language was kind of a bit was a bit of a concern. But ultimately, I was, I was happy at, at Manchester United. Um, but then once it's said that they accept, once someone accepts the price, you feel that you're not wanted, mm. and that's what I felt like I wasn't wanted. So you just sit with him in his car. Yep. Talking and he tells you that's it. And tells me that's it. So anyway. Giggsy ends up coming back he had to, he had to walk back Giggsy because he was like I, mean, I took the buggy he wasn't happy um, <laughs> <laughs> he was fuming so anyway as it goes I go back home I tell my wife Claire listen I think we could be off I'm not too sure but I think we could be off um, so we get talking my agent keeps talking to Inter Milan back forth back forth so then all of a sudden Inter Milan come over to my house in Bramall where I used to live <clears throat> all the press all that lot so Massimo Moratti comes over with Vincenzo, the vice president, a couple of henchmen. Moratti came to, personally? Yeah, to the house. Um, and I've got my agent there, Steve Cutner. So we're, <laughs> we're all sitting in the kitchen, all sitting in the kitchen discussing the finances, as you do. Um, I can remember at the time, you know, that Serie A was the best league in the world then. You talk about the great players who mm -hmm. they are, you know what I mean? And um, so it was something that was kind of, I was getting, you know, I did, I wasn't happy, but it's something I, I wanted to try and experience. So the phone rings, all right? All of a sudden, pick up the phone, it's Sir Alex. 
he's in Colorado, in Colorado Springs. He was, he was in Colorado Springs. And I said, oh, Cafe, you doing X, Y, and Z. He said, oh, Paul, listen, I've had a little bit of rethink. Um, I want you to stay. And I said, Gaffer, no disrespect. I've got Marathi, vice president in my kitchen, with two henchmen, who looked like they could take you out any time they wanted to, with my agent, <laughs> discussing the contract. There's no way I can tell them now that I'm not, not going to sign. And I was close to saying I wanted to stay because, you know, I love my time at Manchester United. But I said, no, it's a new experience for me. I wanted to try it. And when I look back at my whole career, it's probably the best two years of my whole career, just because I, was, I wasn't I was clever at school. You know what I mean? I wasn't educated. But I went in there, learnt a new language, different climate. Yeah. Um, and thoroughly enjoyed my time there. Paul, what a story. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.